Hi everybody, it's Louie again from Glass Blast Collision. Um, I'm uh, building myself a, uh, a 20 gallon uh, sandblasting container and uh, I'm going to hook it to the uh, 56 CFM cast iron compressor that I bought a while ago that I'm going to run off the uh, PTO shaft on a 9N uh, 1943 tractor and I'm gonna make uh, a sandblaster for uh, sandblasting all my projects so uh, look forward to that but for now I'm uh, starting to uh, uh, do what I need to do here with the um, uh, cap on the top and put some fittings on the back of it and a, and a T at the bottom so the sand runs in so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a, a pretty hefty uh, sandblaster. I'll be able to put maybe three bags of sand in it, so it'll keep me going for a while. So, anyways, we'll carry on here. For now, I'm going to take the mini grinder and I'm going to cut this top off here, and and then uh, and then I'll see you in a bit. So there we go. We got the top cut off of it. I just cut through one side and then I just cut through part of the way and just work hardened it till it broke off. And then I'm going to cut a hole in there and make a, uh, a lid that pressurizes from inside. Basically right on the edge of the weld there. wondering yeah cut this cut this apart I can actually weld this on there and cut a hole in here and bring that up from underneath as the as the scenario too think uh, if I go this way my other sandblaster I have it this way and then I pull up on it so if I cut a big enough hole in here okay so I think I'm going to do that and then that's going to be that's going to be the plug that thing this thing here will be this thing will be welded on top So, how will I do this now? So there, that should work fine. This is not rocket science. Yeah, it looks like it's cut all the way through. Get a shot with a hammer. There we go. So we don't need this. Well, if I turn this upside down and I want to empty it out because it's got dirt in it or something, all the sand will flow on the inside edge of this and then flow up into this and then come out the opening. Because the other one that I made, it's got a end that's shaped like this and all the sand gets caught up in the edge of it so it's hard to shake it out get all the dirt out so this will be perfect so now i'm just going to put the flat wheel on the grinder and i'm going to take all the burrs off this edge 
And then I'm going to mark this off all the way around with a marker. Grind it with the grinder so I got a nice clean surface to weld on. And then weld this on top. So I need to cut this all the way around here so it fits up inside this lip. And then there will be a rubber on the inside on the back side here with uh, uh, some urethane, windshield urethane, I'll bond on there and then that'll be the seal. So when the pressure builds up in the tank, it'll pop up against that rubber and seal it. So that's a nice thick tank, so that should work really well. Why not use this added on here? The handle's high enough. I mean, I could cut it down and make it lower, but I'll just hold another gallon more sand. So I'm just going to keep it and utilize it. like this here welds in my way. tank on top of this tank. I'm just going to grab off the paint. Okay. Now, make sure this is centered. And I'll draw a line. And I can cut this out. I'll make it a little bit like I don't know I could make it an inch smaller that would be a lip to add a little bit of strength to this joint right here that I'm welding if I leave this hole that I'm drilling in here I'll leave it back an inch so there'll be like a nice tongue around the outside so when it builds pressure it's it's got this here, it's not just right on my weld, all the pressure is right on the weld pulling on that area with the pressure and it. it'll have like a tongue. So I'm going to get something that's going to cut a circle an inch smaller. Maybe I could even use this. Yeah, I guess that wouldn't be so bad. I would sooner like to cut that ugly weld up, but I guess it's not really going to matter anyways. So. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it this size to see what that looks like. That's plenty of room for the sand to get in there. So that should suffice. That should do it. So this fits inside this. So I need to cut that lip off. So that will drop down inside. So I'll make my plug now. Cut this off. Right here.
There's my cork. So that's that. And now I need to I need to put a handle on this. I need to put a handle on it so I can pull it up and then turn the pressure on and then fill the tank with air. So I'm gonna weld the handle on here. I gotta have something that will work good. Uh, I have an old grinder handle. There we go. So you just pull up on that. That's a good grinder handle. It's gonna weld a, a nut on there. So I gotta find a nut from my bins that fit on there. That's not going to work out very well. Do I need to make this plug a little smaller? The sand has to get by it. Now, it'll probably... here smaller than it is so the sand can flow past it once the sand's dumped in. So I need to cut this smaller. So I will do that and to in, to make this integrity on the top better I'll have to weld something on there so it don't splay open, tear and have the thing go rip. <coughs> we don't want that to happen.
so that's my lid. Sweet. <coughs> now, there's a couple of burrs on the inside of this stuff still. So, there we go, we like, we got like, uh, looks like about an inch overlap on the, on the plunger. And it doesn't fall inside, so that's good. And then we'll just have to have something just hold it up. Just have to have something to hold it up, or maybe I should weld some, some bolts. Weld some bolts on the lip here to set the lid on. So that when it's closed, it kind of sits that way. But it still allows the sand to flow in around the outside of the handle and the lid. So yeah, so I should put some little legs on. Put some little legs on this lid. That's what it should be. Stand up three directions, I think. Should do it. And we will weld them. And now, they stand up there. This goes over top, and we dump the sand in there now. That's not really a big enough opening for sand to go through, so I can always cut the legs off. That's what's cool about this. And a new tank to put just kind of a funnel on the top so that it actually funnels it in instead of the opposite. So, let me think, what have I got that I could use for a funnel? I have this lip right not really that big a flange for a funnel. When you're dumping the bag in, you don't want it like that. So, I'm going to cut the legs off. About an inch, I think we'll probably do it. Let's cut them off an inch. Let's see what that does. Just goes up into there and that. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So now I can weld that on there. Now, where's a good ground? I'm thinking maybe I might grind this area right here a little bit. So I can get a good ground on there. There we go. So I drilled a hole in the front and then I got a little nipple here I cut off. It was like two ender and then I cut it in half. So I'm going to weld that on there like that. And then I'm going to I'm going to lengthen these legs because the hose comes out that has the sandblasting tip on it from the bottom. 
and it's way too low to operate a, a, a ball valve tap and all that stuff. So I'm going to lengthen these legs and I'm going to move those wheels so that they're straight up and down and higher. So, uh, and then I got to run a T from there to here and then go into the T, uh, an elbow and then go into the T in the bottom and then the air will feed in here. The air will feed in there and then come down a pressure pipe, a flow pipe that goes through that T, picks up the sand flow and then shoots out the hose. So here we go, we got a, uh, a foot and that was the piece that I cut out of the top of that. So that worked perfect. So uh, it's like a tripod, it's got the two wheels. And then uh, then I got the T on here and the air, the air nozzle and you plug the hose on right there. And then it the air goes into here and pressurizes the pot when you pull up on this. And then the, this is all pressurized. And then the, 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 once it's pressurized, then the stream of air goes down through the Vitalik uh, uh, clamp here. And it's basically a, a unit that allows you to disassemble it if it gets dirty or plugged or whatever. And then this here is to, to uh, uh, close off so you have a blast of air go, go uh, block it off so it don't go out the hose. Instead, it pushes more air on the on the sand and forces it into that T right there. Here, I'll lay it on its back. Uh, here's, yeah, here's the valve and that's generally open all the time. And you're, you're allowing air to go down here and go through that T right there. And then here's where your sandblasting hose hooks on. And what's cool about this, these Vitalik uh, 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 connections is that you can take them apart and you can like literally unwind this all off here and clean them and put them back together and bolt them back together again. So uh, that's a one inch pipe. So, I mean, I, I used to have a sandblaster that had half inch pipe and uh and it would get plugged up all the time so i wanted to make sure that i had uh some good uh some good size pipe on the next one i built so the last one that i had well i still have it i still use it but it uh basically uh i built it like i don't know in two hours and i had it for 35 years and it was made out of very thin walled uh, uh freon tanks so this is the first time I've ever had one that would hold three bags of sand and not one bag of sand. So this should keep me going for a while. And then I moved the wheels and made it so that it's higher and, and basically uh, stands up, stands up, sits on the foot. And there we go. And then here I just put a... Uh, Put a nipple on here with a tap on it. You can plug an air hose in there, and I can just blow stuff off instead of shutting the fan, the sand off, and 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 blowing stuff off with the end of the sandblaster hose as a blower. I can just plug into the tank and use that air, and then you know that's that's great. And then I still have yet to put a pressure gauge right there. I have a really nice big one. That really, really, you can really see from a distance, so that'll be good. And then this basically here needs the rubber here. So a rubber, uh, a connection for the hose at the back here, for for the for the hose to come off here, and and then uh, uh, an air fitting. I need another adapter to reduce it, reduce it down to an air fitting. I have uh, I have like a like this this style and air fitting like this that's what's going to feed into there but i don't know i might end up go bigger so i get more cfm from the big compressor into the tank so it gives me more air supply more cfm and it allow me to 
blast with more pressure more steadily and and the sand will actually you know do its job and explode into dust when it hits and not just bounce off chip and then i have to sand i have to shovel it up and 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 screen it and put it back in again because it wasn't quite spent so so this will be good this will work real good i'm sure it will so uh thanks for watching and uh once I get uh, my my uh, big compressor mounted on the back of my tractor, uh, I'll be able to take this thing for a spin. Um, I think that uh, you know the compressor I have here in the shop, you know, might might do the job. But I mean, it's always been kind of you know good enough for for an impact. You know, a, a, a spray gun. Uh, if I use my small sandblaster, it works for about 20 minutes, and then you lose air pressure, and you got to wait for it to build up again. So, this one here uh, and that big compressor on the tractor, uh, working at between uh, 400 and uh, 650 RPM, should give me enough CFM to make this thing rock. So, I'm going to be uh, cleaning up a lot of my uh, a lot of my Ontario rust. So anyways, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye now.